Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. One of the fundamental defects of the human race is the need to believe that everything centers around humans. This led to the scientific consensus of geocentrism that Earth was the center of the universe. People have also always believed that they control the weather. In Europe during the 16th century, tens of thousands of people were burned at the stake, accused of being witches who were cooking the weather. Shortly thereafter, Harvard-educated judges sent lots of people to their death, accused of being witches, at the Salem Witch Trials. The Salem Witch Trials were likely motivated by bad weather as well. In Central America, cyclical droughts led to cyclical episodes of mass human sacrifice. They would keep sacrificing people until the drought ended, and then they decided that they had sacrificed enough. Further north in New Mexico, the Anasazi dominated the southwest for many hundreds of years. Pueblo Bonito was the largest apartment complex in the western hemisphere. But the Anasazi were wiped out by a 70-year-long drought during the 13th century. Over the last 2,500 years, the climate of New Mexico has cyclically varied between wet periods and dry periods. I was born in New Mexico right at the end of the 1950s drought, which was one of the most severe of the last 2,500 years. But the weather quickly changed and New Mexico went into one of the wettest periods of the last 2,500 years. The 1980s were very wet in New Mexico and lots of people moved there around that time. They of course believed that was the normal climate and then when New Mexico went dry again around the turn of the century, they believed it was due to the burning of fossil fuels because that's what the press and politicians were telling them. This cyclical drought has naturally led to the superstition that this is the worst mega drought in at least 1,200 years. And out of this superstition has risen many climate prophets. The New Mexico Political Report says a dry Rio Grande in springtime isn't normal, but it will be. They believe the superstition that cyclical droughts in New Mexico are driven by the burning of low-cost, reliable fuels. And then the article showed this picture of a burn area near my hometown of Los Alamos, New Mexico. The Las Conchas fire burned in the year 2011. This area was heavily forested prior to the burn. Many decades of government-sponsored fire suppression had led the forest to become extremely overgrown with excess fuel on the ground. The text in the article below the photograph reads, Before the dome fire then Las Conchas, which burned here in the Jemez Mountains seven years ago, this was a dense conifer forest. Today the climate is too warm for those trees to return. Now let's take a look and see if any of the claims made in this article are accurate. This is an aerial photograph of the burn area from Google Maps. I'm very familiar with the area, and the photograph in the article was taken right here at this bend in the road. Now let's go over the hill to the Pajarito Mountain Ski Area. This is what their webcam looks like this morning. It's very green, and there's lots of conifers growing there, and they look very healthy. I took this photograph of the ski area during July 2019, you can see that the conifer forest is extremely healthy. But the New Mexico Political Report says the climate is too warm for dense conifer forest. The Pajarito Mountain Ski Area, which we were just looking at, is right here. The city of Los Alamos is just over here. The weather forecast for Los Alamos, New Mexico is a flood watch with rain every day for the next 10. And look at these July temperatures. Every single day, the temperature will be less than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That was down in Los Alamos. Up here in the mountains, the temperatures are about 5 to 10 degrees cooler. But the New Mexico Political Report thinks that temperatures in the 60s during July is too warm for conifer trees. The New Mexico Political Report also prophesized a dry Rio Grande. But meanwhile, back in the real world, the headwaters of the Rio Grande are expecting extremely heavy rain over the next 10 days. Mountains along the New Mexico-Colorado border are expecting almost 6 inches of rain. There's going to be flooding over much of the southwest over the next 10 days. The Rio Grande River, well to the south of Albuquerque, is running a little bit below normal for this time of year. But after all the rain over the next 10 days, the water levels will shoot upwards. 
Now let's look at snowpack around the headwaters of the Rio Grande. Wolf Creek Ski Area in southwest Colorado is the snowiest resort in the state. They've received above average snowfall for three out of the last four years. The prophecies of a dry Rio Grande are not based on science and they're not based on reality. Now let's focus on this claim that the climate is now too warm in the Jemez Mountains for dense conifer forests to return. This photograph was taken during the winter and it appears like the area has been destroyed. Now let's look over the hill at the ski area and see what it looks like during the summer. I took this picture during July 2019. You can see that the 2011 burn area is filling in with a very verdant growth of aspen trees. And I took this photograph from the top of the ski hill. You can see that this area is filling in with aspen, oak, and locust. And the next few photographs are what the burn area looked like during October of 2021. The area is much more beautiful now than it was prior to the fire when it was full of thick, overgrown conifer forest. After forest fires occur in the mountains of northern New Mexico, the first trees which grow back are aspens, oaks, and locusts. During the end of June this year, New Mexico was receiving very heavy rain and getting lots of floods. But in late June 1890, they were having massive fires in northern New Mexico on both sides of the Rio Grande. This included the Jemez Mountains, which we've been discussing, and the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, where I used to work as a wilderness ranger. If we look at the New Mexico drought graph for the last 2,500 years, you can see they were having a drought around that time. This photograph was taken north of Santa Fe in the burn scar of the 1890 fire. 130 years after the fire, they have the tallest and some of the most spectacular aspen groves in the world. Regular forest fires are absolutely essential for pine forest health. You can see that conifer trees are now starting to fill in and they will eventually take over where the aspens were growing. 1890 was a very bad year for fires. The fire season started extremely early that year. During the first week of May 1890, there were fires burning all over Minnesota and Wisconsin. Carbon dioxide levels are very low in 1890, but it isn't difficult to imagine the mass hysteria which would occur if we had a repeat of 1890 now. The politics of New Mexico have turned very dark over the last few decades, and the New Mexico Political Report reflects this. When I was growing up in New Mexico, they had fantastic Republican senators. Senator Pete Domenici was one of the best, and Senator Harrison Schmidt was the only scientist to ever walk on the moon. Senator Schmidt is a very intelligent man, and he's been extremely critical of NASA's climate propaganda. Ten years ago, 49 top astronauts and scientists from the moon program sent a letter to NASA. They wrote, we believe the claims that man-made carbon dioxide is having a catastrophic impact on climate are not substantiated. Senator Schmidt was one of those signatories. Having intelligent politicians is extremely important. But New Mexico politics have turned dark, liberal, democrat, and superstitious. New Mexico now has two of the most superstitious senators in the country, Martin Heinrich and Ben Ray Lujan. Neither of them seems to know anything about New Mexico's climate history. Both of them have completely bought off on the superstition that the use of low-cost reliable fuels is the cause of New Mexico's cyclical droughts. The citizens of countries whose governments have bought off on this superstition, like Germany and Britain, are now paying an extremely high price. Because their governments decimated the reliable energy supply, the people of both countries face severe energy shortages this winter. People are going to freeze to death because of their politicians' superstitions about climate. So basically, nothing has changed over the last 600 years. Human sacrifices are still being made in an effort to get rid of bad weather. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this superstition for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Tokianupala on the web at realclimatescience.com.